Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Jupin. I'm a fourth year medical student studying in Poland. If you guys would like to know which Polish medical university I go to, as always, make sure to go and check out this video here. And uh, let's get straight into the video. So in today's reaction video, we're going to be looking at Poland, the next hurricane of the EU. Let's check it out. I talked about Poland recently on Visual Politic. I'll leave a video link in the description below. To recap, its growth and development process in the last decades have been vertiginous. Vertiginous? Fancy word. Since 1992, the Polish economy has grown at an average rate of over 4% per year. Compared to other European nations, Poland has been one of the most prosperous countries sitting just behind Ireland, Estonia, and Latvia. In fact, even though it may seem surprising given their historical circumstances, mm -hmm. Poles are already within the European average in terms of poverty risk. In other words, Poland has been one of the countries that has best managed to digest the political, economic, and social transitions that the former Soviet bloc countries had to face after the USSR collapsed. But not everything that glitters is gold. They have great statistics and economic data, there's no doubt about that. In that regard, they're undeniably successful. But what's happening in the political and social arena? Well, that's exactly where things get a bit murkier, especially if you care about such things as civil liberties. By now, you probably realize it's easier to change an economy than a society. Societal change, it just takes much longer. As we'll see, Poland, along with Hungary, is probably the most conservative and traditionalist country in the entire European Union. This might give you a bit of an idea. Christianity is part of our national identity. The Catholic Church was and is the preacher and holder of the only commonly held system of values in Poland. Outside of it, we have only nihilism. Jaroslav Kaczynski, former prime minister and the current leader of the Law and Justice Party, the largest political party in the Polish parliament. And it's not just a matter of religion. This country has also been characterized by promoting a political agenda that, for many, directly clashes with the EU's principles. Do you want to know more about what is happening in Poland? How truly conservative its society is? What's the agenda that has become a real headache for the European authorities? Well, listen up. <laughs> Basically, if you're not Catholic, white, and straight in Poland, you might get into trouble. It's safe to say that in one way or another, you'll feel outcast by a large part of society, and also by the government. Poland's ruling party fuels anti-LGBT sentiment ahead of elections. Polish election. Leader of Poland's Law and Justice Party targets gay rights as threat to society. In this country, rejection of everything beyond the traditional Christian family model is very present within Polish society. For example, in most European countries, Countries. The government's main party calling LGBT people a threat to society would be unthinkable. However, here it happens every day. Poland's is just kind of like that. Yeah, they are very conservative, there's no doubt. It's such a Catholic, now, how it's such a Christian country. I mean, the, the Christianity religion or the Catholicism is so ingrained into the Polish culture, so very, very conservative this, which somehow promotes the harassment of minorities, fit into a project like the European Union. And, well, that's the big dilemma. Because Polish policy is sometimes rather hard to understand. On the one hand, Poles continue to re-elect a nationalist, anti-immigration and homophobic party to lead the country. That is, they choose leadership that is against everything the European Community Project represents. Yet, on the other hand, Polish society has the most favorable impression of the European Union. Check this out. Of course, it's one thing to like the European Union, and a very different one to be willing to comply with the guidelines that emanate from Brussels. So check out how the polls are going with that. EU top court. Poland broke EU law with judicial reform. Poland, Hungary broke EU laws by refusing to host migrants, court advisor. Poland defies Brussels by vowing to stick to coal. Poland plans to prioritize curbing its reliance on Russian energy, and so continuing its dependence on coal over signing up to the EU's net zero emissions target, and a move that is set to put Warsaw on a collision course with Brussels over climate policy. The European Union strives to make fair rules for its member states, and when it comes to the crunch, Poland goes rogue. But if they don't agree, 
agree with the EU recommendations, how can it be that Poles have such a favourable opinion of the European Union? Well, we're going to answer that question, but we're going to take it step by step, because believe me when I say that Polish politics is, well, rather crazy. <laughs> It has been more than two years since Brussels called Poland out over its alleged undemocratic drift. So could Poland be turning towards authoritarianism? Well, that's the first big question. So let's take a look. <laughs> Polish democracy in check. It turns out there's one thing that's much more important than Poland's loyalty to the European Union. I'm talking about the health of democracy. The truth is that today, Polish democracy isn't in a good place, and that's rather worrying. What has been most alarming has been the Polish government's increasingly personalist shift. For example, there's been the attempt of Jarosław Kaczynski, the PIS party leader, to reduce the retirement age of the Supreme Court judges from 70 to 65, which would mean kicking up 40% of them out. Naturally, they would need to be replaced by other judges, one likely to be on good terms with the party. This situation became so serious that the change was halted by the European Court of Justice as they considered it to be a clear attempt for political control over the judiciary. However, despite all of this, the government has continued to move in that same direction in many ways. For example, in 2017, the government got Parliament to approve three very controversial laws. This was Kaczynski's personal push to control the country. Literally nothing and no one was going to stand in his way. Basically, the three laws not only intended to grant legislators enormous power over the judiciary's general counsel, but also gave the justice minister himself, who, by the way, is also the attorney general, the right to appoint local court judges and chiefs. You can imagine what this would mean in terms of political control over the courts. In an unexpected turn of events, the country's president, Andrzej Duda, who's sympathetic towards the PIS but doesn't actually belong to the party, soon vetoed two of those three laws, only allowing the Minister of Justice to appoint the local court chiefs. If you're looking for a car that's insanely stylish, eco-friendly, extremely... But the court chiefs. But that wasn't the end of the story. The government's obsession to control justice is constant. Poland is purging its prosecutors. Disciplinary chamber for Polish judges, not independent, says ECJ's top advisor. So by this point, many of you are probably wondering, what's the EU doing about all of this? Well, we can almost say that the European community authorities have launched a frontal attack on Poland over all of these issues. In fact, for the first time in history, Brussels activated the disciplinary action mechanism against a member of the country, something that could end with suspending Poland's right to vote in European decisions. Poland taken to EU's top court over alleged political control of judiciary. And what can I say? They have every reason to do so. Seeing politicians messing with the justice system is very worrying. However, the confrontations don't end with the Polish government's attempts to assault its own courts and end the separation of powers. <laughs> If we also add in all of the current ruling parties, xenophobic, ultra-Catholic, and homophobic policies, then we find a country that directly contests all of the actions that the European Union has taken in recent years. Poland bashes immigrants, but quietly takes Christian ones. Liberals fear unrest as Polish Catholic Church doubles down on anti-gay rhetoric. The Archbishop of Kraków, Marek Jędrzejewski, described Poland as under siege from a, quote, rainbow plague of gay rights campaigners. He compared to Poland's former communist rulers. In Poland's upcoming election, the Law and Justice Party is demonizing the LGBT community to win. Basically, the political directions of the European Union and Poland's are apples and oranges. And at this point, you might be thinking, well, Simon, why then do Poles have such a good image of the European Union? Well, the truth is that the PIS, the government, and therefore the Polish society, don't dislike everything that the European Union has to offer. In fact, there's something they seem to be quite fond of. Money, everyone loves it. 
Criticising the EU in Europe isn't unusual. It happens all over. But here is where polls take the cake. Complying with community regulations, re political and judicial guarantees, respecting minorities, or accepting the 6,200 applicants that Brussels assigned to Poland in the distribution of refugees within the community, well, that's not happening. But money, oh well, money, that's a whole other thing. The EU's money is, of course, well received. It's welcomed with open arms and a huge smile. And we're not talking about small change here. Since Poland joined the EU, it has received more than 110 billion dollars in community aid. The European Cohesion Fund alone has awarded Poland more than 85 billion dollars for the 2014 to 2020 period to finance infrastructure projects such as highways and railways. In fact, Poland receives more funds from the Cohesion Funds than any other EU country. As a side note, contrary to what is usually claimed, this type of aid wasn't key in Poland's economic takeoff, not at all, but it did help. And this promotes a question that has more and more political EU leaders scratching their heads. Should the EU community make it a condition to provide financial aid only to the countries that agree to comply with the EU? rules and resolutions? Should Brussels freeze funds allocated to member states that have anti-liberal populist governments that don't fulfill their responsibilities? Well, it looks like it's going that way. Brussels tells Poland EU is, quote, not a cow you can milk. And in a way, it makes sense, doesn't it? The fact is that right now, the EU cohesion funds, terms and distribution for the 2021 to 2027 period are being negotiated. And it looks like Poland won't do well. Poland to get 23% less EU 2020 to 2027 budget. And if this news is confirmed, Poland could lose almost a quarter of the money it currently receives from the EU. Although with just over $64 billion, it would continue to be the largest fund recipient. But even what? this budget reduction is not what it seems. This cast actually has nothing to do with a punishment or anything like that, or the fact that Poland, as we told you at the beginning of the video, is a wealthier country today, with better infrastructure, and it's closer to the development average of the rest of the European Union. That, and the fact that Brexit has forced Brussels to tighten its belts as it can no longer count on the United Kingdom's annual contribution to the community coffers, well, this is where we are. Brexit. In any case, this raises a question. Given Polish society's political tendencies and its enormous divergence from the path that Brussels has set, wouldn't decreasing Poland's funds slowly push this country further away from the Union? Won't the Polish nationalist parties just exploit these cuts as proof of community interference? And the most important question of all, are Polish and Hungarian policies, Eastern European policies, even compatible with the European Union? But leave your answer in the comments section below, and I really hope you did enjoy this video. Interesting. So the dark side of Poland, it being a very conservative country, which is true. Um, I believe a few months ago or last year, there was a new law that was put out that being children under a certain age are not allowed to be educated about sexual education by their parents or by anybody and obviously by the school. I forgot what their age is. And if they were to be educated about sexual education, that person or that group of people, they will have some major consequences. Like like going to jail and so on but anyway guys if you've come to the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it make sure to drop a like and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell i'll see you guys in the next video peace